This is from uh, Luke from Virginia. I'm a huge fan of you guys, so thank you for doing what you're doing. I just finished podcast 148, and I have a similar decision ahead of me as Dan from podcast 148. What to do about peeling clapboards with lead paint. In July... My family bought a 1920 farmhouse that I've been fixing up and restoring its original charm. My dad was a carpenter for 25 years, so I'm leaning heavily on him and you guys. We're not currently living in the house, which makes things a bit easier. I've intended to restore the original lead-painted wood clapboard, but the lead paint is giving me a little pause. Currently, the house has 30-plus-year-old vinyl siding on it. No insulation anywhere in the house, by the way. The siding is damaged in places and failing in others, such as around windows, so I believe something needs to be done. I also think the siding is ugly, so that's another motivator. I wouldn't hesitate to rip it all off, sand, repair, prime, paint the wood. I don't mind painting the house every few years, except the fact that it has who knows how many coats of lead paint. We have three kiddos from one to seven, so the lead is a concern. It sure is. What are your recommendations? Here's my current thinking. So he has three options of what's going on, and we have some photos of his house, which is quite attractive, i got to say. Option one, get a company to remove the siding in a lead-safe manner, and if not in terrible condition, to prime prime and paint the original clapboards. Total estimate at uh, $8,000. I don't know where his numbers come from, but I think that would be a that sounds pretty uh, that'd reasonable. That would be a good deal. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, so, a lot, where I live, you wouldn't even get the thing painted for that much. No way. Um, hire out the siding removal only, $2,000. Once again, that seems low. Then assess the clapboard myself, rent scaffolding, and prime paint as safely as possible. Option three, forget about restoring the original wood clapboard, remove the siding, and install new siding, and get a third job to pay for the hardy plank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got three little kids, so I don't think that's an option. Um, if option one's only going to be eight thousand bucks, go do for that. it. That's my yeah. Idea. I mean, I, I've I know a couple of people who have lived in old houses who have had young children around with uh, lead paint, and some of them have gone to great lengths to encapsulate the lead paint, which you know, basically, as long as they can't so get how, to it, encapsulate how? Basic. Uh, I mean, it, vinyl with siding the, like with vinyl siding, already, is yeah. <laughs> but. Um, but, you know, it's always a risk. I mean, I had a friend whose daughter uh, had lead poisoning when she was really young, and it was because she was like, climbing up and handling uh, some trim and some furniture that had lead paint on it. Kids want to play in uh, window openings, right? Mm-hmm. And the sill is where all the lead chips collect from the window going up and down, and they want to play in there, right? I remember mm-hmm. doing that as a kid. That yeah. might explain some things to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah. So that's but, a problem. But, yeah, so, I mean... If you if you follow the EPA guidelines and do everything to the T with the testing and the site prep and protection, um, I'd say if you're really ambitious, you could do as good a job as one of as a remodeler who's been certified to do the lead lead paint remodeling. Um, but is it worth the risk? I don't know. I mean, uh, I I kind of come down on the same uh, side of this equation. Uh, I think it's totally within the realm of a good DIYer's ability to strip this paint safely and repaint. Um, I think there's good reason to do that. If you look at the photographs, the detailing around windows and stuff is really dodgy. Um, Almost certainly there's water getting behind this siding and gosh knows what it's doing uh, inside the building envelope. So, I mean, I think there's a good reason to take the siding off uh, and see what's going on back there. As far as, you know, either repainting or replacing the clapboards that's a tougher call a complete strip of paint is going to cost thousands of dollars and it has to be done conscientiously or you're going to spread lead everywhere and you really have to do an evaluation as it's coming off on whether that wood is really worth saving yeah and it could be it could vary depending on where it is on the house almost certainly the stuff up closer to the overhangs is going to be in better shape than stuff lower down where water has a chance to run in so yeah. Yeah. So I mean, maybe maybe it's you hire hire someone to do the the removal, and then you kind of have to make a call after that on whether it's worth saving. I think that uh, he could easily take off the siding himself if he had some good staging. Uh, it's not hard. It, it, yeah. it pulls right off. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about this whole thing? I mean, those costs seem really low. 
I mean, just renting all that scaffolding, you don't want to be setting that up and moving it like. <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> like wall to wall like, to wall and, and then have to move it back or whatever. I have a great capacity to forget about those parts of the process. Like I'm already thinking about ripping the siding off. Well, you you got to stage it first, right? Yeah. And that can take hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole reason why I have never dealt with any of the siding on my house, I have, I have almost the same scenario. I have vinyl over who knows what kind of condition collaborates and the vinyl and the aluminum that someone put on later on is literally just caulked to the window jams. And I have no idea what it looks like under there, but my house is 40 feet tall and I don't mind pulling siding all day long, but, but (laughs) but 30 feet up in the air, (laughs) moving scaffolding around. I I did some, I've did a few windows on a neighbor's house who's about the same size as my house. And it was just, I mean, I've done that stuff, pl- that kind of work plenty of times, but when you're not, when you're just a DIYer and you don't actually have the truckload full of scaffolding that the company I used to work for has just like at their disposal. And some help to help you move it around. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if, if it really is as affordable as, I mean, obviously if he's in Virginia, you know, it costs might be balanced out by wages. So maybe it, what seems cheap to us isn't cheap to yeah. someone down there. Agreed. But um, here's something else. Um, no matter what you do, you should go to the epa.gov slash lead website, and there is great information on how to do this yourself if you want to, and it's also great information to monitor your contractor and make sure they're doing it the right way so your kids don't get poisoned. So lots of good stuff on there, and we'll put that on the um, uh, podcast page as well. And uh, I'm definitely going to put up a brochure uh, from the EPA called Lead Safe Practices, and this talks about the right way to strip your house, whether it's indoors or out, and, and what uh, you know accommodations you need to make to keep from making a mess yep. and poisoning your family. Mm-hmm. And when those regulations, and yeah, and your neighbors, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when those regulations first came out, uh, you know, we made a we made a point to really try to look into it and see what was involved back at home building. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we've got a bunch of older articles from that, from when the law originally passed. And uh, I believe we, I mean, I know it was on a, on a photo shoot. I can't remember if we did video of that as well, but we have some. Setting you know, up it's, the it's one thing, ground protection yeah, and stuff. Because yeah. it's one thing to, um, it's one thing to know what the regulations are, but to see someone who's actually done it on a site. And, and, and it was a similar kind of house. It was a big old two-story house here in Connecticut that, that uh, we followed a guy uh, on site. And it's a pretty elaborate process of setting up all the tarps. But it's and, nothing outrageous, I would say. It's all very no, common sense. It, you know, no. you got to spend some money on some plastic sheeting and some protective gear, clothing, Um and it's really just time. You know, I mean, if you're a DIYer, it's, you know, if you're someone who's paying a remodeler who has to deal with this uh, on your, on a project that was, you didn't know that lead was a concern, it, you might get some sticker shock at, at what the additional costs are. But if you're someone who's a savvy DIY person, um, yeah, it's not difficult to do. It just takes extra time. It's going to take a long time. Doing a whole house would be... Yeah. A huge project. Yeah, wet scraping, wet sanding. Yeah, no dry stuff. scraping, no yeah. sand, dry sanding. Yeah. You got to wear, you know, a good respirator. Yeah. And, um, and putting down the, the plastic, uh, you know, to contain, to, catch, the chips. to contain all the dust and chips. And yeah. there's been huge advances in uh, dust collecting uh, HEPA vacuums now, right, that attach to grinders and sanders and all kinds of tools, and those can be a huge help to prevent uh, yeah. airborne particles. And you've seen, I'm sure you've seen those, those, uh, Shrouds that go over the angle grinder heads yes. to cut. It's basically, it almost looks like the brush attachment on your vacuum cleaner at home, but it surrounds the, the sanding disc so that you can. And finally, there is a specialty tool called a paint shaver uh, that is made for removing paint from uh, wood siding and it does dust collection and uh, it might be worth it. It's an expensive tool. I want to say it's 600 bucks, but. If you had a whole house to do, I think it would be worth it. It's basically an angle grinder with like a carbide rotating face, you know, grinder with it's 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 sort yeah. of as if you took the teeth off of a of a uh, circular saw and put them on the side of the blade instead yeah. of the fi- the ends. They're bigger though. Yeah. yeah. And um, 
the one thing with those is that uh, metal fasteners, whether it be staples or nails, can be a problem. Justin yeah. says it pulls them right out. It's really? not a problem at all. Yeah, yeah but, it might, it, but depending on the condition of your clabberds, it might do a number on the clabberds. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing I would be most worried about. Plus, <laughs> just the, ripping those the up. The tool itself, if it, as expensive as it is, you'd probably be chipping some carbide teeth quite a bit, I would imagine. Them. Yes, but it's an excuse to buy a new tool, so I would totally course, go for yeah. it. <laughs> 